Hello YouTube, hello viewers, and welcome back to another episode of creating our social network API using Laravel. We're going through this quite nicely at the moment. We've managed to upload images and all those nice cool things. And what we're going to look at today is how do we actually help our front-end guys to get the right images and, and stuff like that. So today's going to be, I wouldn't say a very long session. It's going to be nice and quick, this one actually. Uh, but it's just going to show you how we can use those relationships that we make and how we can use them to our advantage when it comes to uh, manipulating data and what we send back inside our responses and etc. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. So where we left off last is we made this user image controller which was uploading our images. And what was happening is inside those images is we were saving them into our database here. And we're saving them as a URL string because we wanted to use these um, pretty much to help our front end guys to find out what we wanted to do with those URLs. So if we actually I'll put a dot accent, so we know that we get a response back in regards to that URL that we upload. Oh, sorry, that image that we upload. So the problem that we're having though is we haven't one made an endpoint to retrieve all images, for example, we haven't done that. All we've done is we made an endpoint to upload an image, but we also know that inside our data we've assigned a user ID against each one of these attributes. And this is where it's going to become vital for us um, that we can use these user IDs and we can attach them to calls that we currently have um, with inside our, our data set. And the one we're going to pretty much focus on is going to be this get me request here, which technically should be inside our user folder. So we should just move into there for now. So on this user me and we hit send on that, we should get a response back from that user and this is coming from our user controller, or I'm not sure what it's actually called until we check. But basically it's just coming back with whatever details we have of that user. And we can check that because if we look at the user table, we have got that data. So we've got Bob, um, which is number 11, the guy that we're using at the moment. This was to make sure that there were verified users. And we're not using this remember token um, because we have Passport installed. So we don't really need to worry about this remember token right now. And then obviously their password, which is encrypted and created an update date. And we can see that inside Postman, we're getting all that response back. And sometimes we don't really want to show this, so we can do a few techniques to remove this. But what we want to do as well is we want to include any images we upload against that user into this payload. And it's actually really, really easy because we set up the relationship inside our migration, if you remember. So all we have to do is just do a little bit of voodoo laravel magic and we'll be able to manage to get it to work so to do this all we're going to have to do is add in a few bit of features and these are going to done not in any of our controllers but it's actually going to be done all in our models so we can actually close all these and we're going to open up our user model to start off with so just minimize all this and we should have a user model here okay and remember many Many, many lessons ago, we did this thing called status updates, and that allowed us to create a status update, and we could see all their statuses that they created. We're gonna kind of follow the same type of logic. But in this case, we want to get the user's images. So it's gonna be public function, I don't know if I can type, function images, open close brackets, and then open close parentheses. And we're gonna do the same thing here because a user can have many images. So we need to remember that. So a user can have as many images as they like. Okay? And obviously we don't want to use this status update class. We want to target the user file class that we have here. Because that's where we, what we're using as our model for user up, for file uploads. Okay? Now let's have a look and see what happens if I run something in Postman. Now we know it's part of the user object right now. Okay? but we're not getting anything back even though I'm still returning back the user object. And that's one or two things because we haven't really specified that we want anything within that data. And these are things that you can include into the controller of like saying where this or where that, and you can add those functionalities in. Or there's a different approach which I'm gonna show you in a second. But we need to make sure that we have a relationship that can return something back to this model. So if we have a look at the status update one we created, so I'm just gonna go into there. You'll notice we had this function, which was saying, okay, 
the status updates belonged to the user class. Well, we want the same thing to happen with inside the user file model. So we're just going to grab that and paste it in. So we're saying the public function user, and then this belongs to the user class because we know that we have this relationship between the user class and the user file. So what happens if we have Postman now? So we hit send. We still not get anything back because we haven't specified what we want to come back from this object. Okay? So we can do some Laravel magic here. We can specify how we want this to actually look inside the model. Now, this is a very generic way and this will apply to everything. You can create separate functions if you like, but for this tutorial series, I'm just going to keep it very basic. And we're going to go into the user and we're going to use some Laravel voodoo, voodoo magic, which is called to array. So it's public function to array. And basically this to array allows us to specify what we want to come back on our responses from this model. You could have created another one called public function Bob, open close brackets and return something back. In this case, we're just going to use the voodoo magic of to array, which applies to every call that we do that includes this model. So in our return, it's going to be an array as we can see here. So let's just open and close an array. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I want to do that. And we can just get rid of this logic here. So what do we put in this? Well, we know inside our user model, the only things we really bothered about really for our, our front end guys is maybe the user ID, the user's name and the user's email. We're not really too bothered about the rest, I don't think. So we just want to include three fields from this. So we can quite easily say ID belongs to dollar this ID. And you're thinking, well, what does this mean if I'm saying this ID? Well, I'm referring to the table, this, so this model table, and I'm referring to this ID here. So it'll be whatever we retrieve from this section here. And we want to include the name. So we can do name. And if we look inside our table, it's just called name. So it'll be this name. Okay. And we also want to include the email and we can know that that's just called email. So we'll duplicate that and we'll call this email and that could be email. Okay. So basically this will return only what we specified back to the end user. So let's see what happens if we run this in Postman. And there we go. All we do is we get returned back an ID with the number, the name of the person and their email address that's associated to it. But we're still not really seeing anything that revolves around these images that we created. Well, this is the nice thing about our little Laravel voodoo magic is that we can quite spec quite easily say my images. OK, so images is this images like so, because we've made that relationship. So let's see what happens now when we call it. So let's go into Postman, hit play, and we can see we get all the images back because of our relationship. And we can see these are all the files that we have with inside the database. But it's, al it's also coming back with all this, sh this junk that we really don't need because it's coming back with created our dates and the user ID. We're not really bothered about that right now. Um, and it's coming with deleted updates. Again, this is something we, that's not really relevant for us. So we can do the same again with inside the model. So the user file model doing the same step. So we could say to array like so, and we're going to return back an array like so. And it's going to be, we want the ID because just in case we want to maybe delete the users, um, uh, image or whatever. So we're going to use the ID. And we can say, is this ID like so? And obviously we want to have that file name. Okay. So file underscore name is going to this. So this file underscore name. Hit save. And let's see what we get back as the return. Oops, that is not postman. Hit send. And there we go. So we have a little bit more of a neater um, aspect of what we're coming back from the images relationship. And now we know that this user here, he's got 
these three images and we've now got reference to those paths that we've created for each one of those images. And this just makes it easier now for, uh, I don't know, whoever's, whoever's working on the front end of this application to say, okay, well, if I can call this endpoint, I've actually got access to all the user's images instead of maybe calling another endpoint, which we are going to do later on to pretty much CRUD operation to delete, edit, or remove these images away from the user. But obviously we want to make sure that's very specific to that end user. And that's pretty much it. A very short session today, but you can kind of get to grips of how do we specify what information we want to send between each one of these models. Now remember this will happen to every single model call that will happen. So if you uh, if there's things that you do want to show, this would not be the best approach. You'd want to break it down into different functions, um, again, with their own unique names, and you would call them on your controllers. But in this case, because we're just doing it as a tutorial, we can kind of see that we can manipulate the data that comes back. Just one thing I want to show you as well, it doesn't have to be specific to the name. I could have called this file underscore path, okay, which would make more sense maybe for our front end. And if we hit send again, we can see that it just changes the name of that. So we can actually change names as long as um, the actual table or column name is the right, the correct name. And this will all fall together. And that's pretty much it. Again, this has been a, a nice quick session today. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope you, if you really, if you did like it, make sure you hit the like button. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button. Um, and if you really, really liked it, make sure you just share this with all your friends. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.